Welcome back to Upgrade to General, a series to help you upgrade your amateur radio license to general class. And this is episode sub-element G3, question group A, and I'm your host, Ron Call, KE7CR. This question group is about how the sun affects radio propagation, some of my favorite topics. So before we start off, I want to start with the idea that you understand that any electrical current, any charged particles that are moving create a magnetic field. And any fluctuating magnetic field will induce a current of electricity. These two interacting forces make radio propagation so much fun. For example, a radio wave is just a fluctuating electromagnetic field. As it travels up into the ionosphere, it encounters ions and electrons, and they are moving so they have magnetic fields that interacts with the electromagnetic radio wave. So we have all kinds of fun interactions. The sun is also releasing lots of solar radiation, mostly ultraviolet, some x-rays that will interact with the molecules of the Earth's upper atmosphere and ionize them, creating particles that interact with radio waves. Also, the sun releases charged particles, protons and electrons, that eventually make their way, some of them, to the Earth and interact with the Earth's magnetic field lines. And that also creates interesting situations for radio. So with that background, let's jump into question number one. How does a higher sunspot number affect HF propagation? Now, the sun does not constantly put out the same amount of energy. It's kind of cyclical. The sun rotates and on about an, uh, every 11 year period on average, it goes from a less energy output we call a solar minimum to a higher energy output called a solar maximum. One indication of high energy output times is the number of sunspots. Sunspots are actually darker areas of the sun because the temperature in those areas is lower because of tangled up magnetic field lines on the surfaces of the sun. And that suppresses the plasma and hot gas from emerging from deeper down, creating a little cooler area. But those tangled magnetic field lines are an indication of stored energy. And as they rupture and as they release that energy, that's an indication that the sun is putting out more energy. So a higher sunspot number indicates a more active sun near the solar maximum time. Now, as the sun releases more energy, it interacts with the atmosphere of the Earth higher up, creating ions, especially UV light. It strips electrons away from oxygen and nitrogen and atoms high up in the atmosphere, creating the ionosphere. The more ultraviolet light there is, the denser the ionosphere becomes and generally can refract HF radio signals better. So the answer is the higher sunspot numbers, which would mean the solar output is more, generally indicates a greater probability of good propagation at higher frequencies. Next question, what effect does a sudden ionospheric disturbance have on the daytime ionospheric propagation? Now, a sudden ionospheric disturbance, that's when uh, there's like a sudden solar flare and it releases a, a bunch more ultraviolet light, x-rays, and within a few minutes they hit the Earth's atmosphere and ionize much more of it. And so, very quickly, the daylight side becomes much more ionized and that's going to change the propagation conditions. So, the answer is it disrupts signals on the lower frequencies more than those on the higher frequencies. That's because the lower frequency HF have less energy than the higher frequency HF. And the higher the frequency, the more energy that wave has to penetrate through the ionosphere. So if the ionosphere is very dense, the lower frequencies get absorbed more readily than the higher frequencies. Next question, approximately how long does it take the increased ultraviolet and X-ray radiation from a solar flare to affect radial propagation on Earth? Light from the sun takes about eight minutes to hit the Earth, so that's the length of time that it takes. Eight minutes. Next question, which of the following are the least reliable bands for long distance communications during periods of low solar activity? So when the sun is kind of at a solar minimum, not many sunspots, it's not putting out enough energy to heavily ionize the upper atmosphere so we have the higher frequency HF bands actually have enough energy to just penetrate off and go out into space. So the most reliable bands during those low solar activities would be the lower HF bands. The least reliable bands would be the upper HF bands. So that would be 15 meters, 12 meters, 10 meters. Those ones are not good during low solar activity. 
Now there's different ways to measure the amount of energy coming off the sun. One is the sunspot number. Another is the solar flux index. So the next question says, what is the solar flux index? It's just a measure of solar radiation with a wavelength of 10.7 centimeters. That's essentially the how much energy, RF energy, radio frequency energy is coming off the sun. Next question, what is a geomagnetic storm? Now that's a temporary disturbance in Earth's geomagnetic field. That's caused by it being hit by a bunch of charged particles being released from the sun. Sometimes the sun has what we call a coronal mass ejection. It shoots a bunch of charged particles at the Earth. When those hit the Earth's magnetic field, they can distort the magnetic field lines and that causes a disturbance in the Earth's geomagnetic field. There are various websites you can use to check the solar conditions. On the ARRL's website, they have the solar update, the K7RA solar update each day. Also, spaceweather.com. You can take a look at the current image of the sun. Here's the sunspot groups right now. It also shows the solar wind speed in uh, kilometers per second and their density. There are other websites. This one, uh, Current Ham Radio Propagation Conditions, will show some of these and explain what they mean. So it has the solar flux index number, the sunspot number, and then explains it over here. For the solar flux index, you know, currently it's 131, so that's the best range. They also give the A and K indexes, which we'll be talking about in just a minute. Here's another website, Solar Conditions and Ham Radio Propagation, that also show sunspot number, solar flux index, geomagnetic storm prediction, and which bands at which times of day will be good for propagation. So the next question is, at what point in the solar cycle does the 20 meter band usually support worldwide propagation during daylight hours? 20 meters is kind of a workhorse band. It's good generally all the time. Daylight hours, it's good to go at any point in the solar cycle. Next question. How can a geomagnetic storm affect HF propagation? Now, a geomagnetic storm is when lots of charged particles, lots of radiation from the sun are hitting the Earth's magnetic field and distorting that magnetic field. Now, remember, charged particles that are traveling produce magnetic fields. So when those particles, protons and electrons hit the Earth's magnetic field, because of their own magnetic fields, these particles are deflected. Some towards the north magnetic pole and some towards the south magnetic pole. As those particles get closer to the Earth's surface and interact with more and more molecules in the atmosphere, that's what causes the auroras. So a good sign that there's a, a geomagnetic storm is the auroras. And that also distorts or degrades HF propagation, especially at high latitudes. As you get closer and closer to the North Pole and South Pole, HF radial propagation is degraded. So the answer to that question is degrades high latitude HF propagation. Next question, how can high geomagnetic activity benefit radio communications? Again, just because HF communication is disrupted, especially at higher latitudes, there are frequencies that are enhanced by auroras. Because it's an area of high ionization, VHF communications, which normally those wavelengths, those energies penetrate right through the ionosphere. But because of the high ionization level of the auroras, those VHF signals are reflected. So the correct answer to this question is it creates auroras that can reflect VHF signals. Next question, what causes HF propagation conditions to vary periodically in a 26 to 28 day cycle? And the answer is because the sun rotates. Different areas of the sun rotate at different rates because it's a ball of gas and not solid. But roughly at the latitudes, mid latitudes that affect Earth's HF propagation, it rotates every 26 to 28 days. Say for example, a big sunspot group is facing the Earth, about 26 to 28 days later, that same sunspot group would be facing the Earth again, if it's still active. So you often get a 26 to 28 day cycle because of the sun's surface layers rotating around its axis. Next question, how long does it take a coronal mass ejection to affect radio propagation on Earth? Now here it's important to realize that when a coronal mass ejection happens, that's when particles are shot off the surface of the sun. It's protons and electrons, it's not light. So that's the difference between a solar flare and a coronal mass ejection. 
a coronal mass ejection emits particles. Solar flare is emitting light, x-rays, ultraviolet light. And so light will hit the, the Earth in about eight minutes. At the speed of light, Earth is about eight minutes away from the sun. But a coronal mass ejection, that depends on the strength of that eruption and how fast those particles are traveling. So that answer would be anywhere from 15 hours to several days later. Next question, what does the K index measure? The four most common indices of how the sun is affecting radio propagation on Earth are the sunspot number, the solar flux index, the A index, and the K index. Now the K index, think of K as kick. You know, just remember K, kick, it's a short-term stability of Earth's geomagnetic field. On a scale of zero to nine, zero being quiet, nine being greatly disturbed, the K index measures a quick, short-term measurement, short-term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. Whereas the next question says, what does the A index measure? And the A index measures a long-term stability of the Earth's geomagnetic field. So A for average, think about it, oh, it's, it's averaged over several days. The lower the number, the more quiet the magnetic field, the higher the number, the more severe the disturbance. So those are the A and the K index. Remember, K for kick, A for average. Next question, how is long distance radio communication affected by the charged particles that reach Earth from solar coronal holes? Again, a solar coronal hole, particles are gonna escape from that, protons and electrons. It's gonna take some time, but those particles are going to interact with Earth's magnetic field. They're going to disturb the magnetic field. So we're gonna have a little geomagnetic storm disturbance. So the answer to this question is HF communication is disturbed. And that's the last question in this section. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a lot from it and we'll see you for the next session. This is your host, KE7CR73s.